can um, then approve them um, because it has to be a, the people that are, were there. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna go to the next one on hold. Um, uh, we were talking, the next one is the website discussion. I just wanna let people know that I, um, why is that thing on? I'm just gonna say continue being recorded. Okay, I just wanna let people know that um, every time I get something from Rhode Island Commerce or a small business association or anything like that, that might have an impact in terms of um, acquiring, getting loans or whatever, I do put that immediately on the website. So for example, um, this today is the fourth, fifth, yesterday, there was some kind of a, a heads up kind of announcement from Rhode Island Commerce that said that come the 19th, there is more money that's gonna be made available for businesses. Um, and they're gonna be updating their website. So I had already sent that to Dave Robert who puts it on, but when we get more information, I will also put that on the website. So if businesses know to go to the EDC website, that's always updated. Um, and then um, Barbara did tell me that she had spoken to uh, the woman who runs um, the s and &S Transmission and that was the company that received an award, um, an entrepreneurial award in Tiverton. It's a young woman. Her name, um, her name is, I don't have it with me right now. Caitlin uh, Skutkvik. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, she was lovely. Um, yes. And I, I called her up to just let her know, how, you know, that that was great. We had seen it in the paper. Um, and that Barbara was gonna be getting in touch with her to have her write something up because at our last meeting, we talked about um, doing that also on our website, sort of using um, it to promote a local business. So she was gonna be the first one. So as soon as we get the, the thing from her, we'll just also put that on our website. So, you know, it's just to, you know, a good thing to put up. And, but I, I change have, it once a, once a month and before you get <laughs> enough of them, do it every other week or something. Yeah, I think that would be a good way to go. Um, but I was going to ask you as a group, is this something that you think we should bring to the attention of the town council as well? I, I just wonder if that's another way to get some publicity for the EDC. All or, right. You know, to go to the town, to put it on the agenda or go... Um, you know, to a meeting and say, we just wanted to um, congratulate right. Caitlin for her um, award. Um, the EDC had contacted her and blah, blah, blah. And I just don't know how to get the word out that we actually exist. So I was wondering if that's something that we should look at. And if anybody has an idea on that. It wouldn't hurt. It might be good to have one or two things to talk about if you're going to stand up, but that could be one of them. Yeah. You know, doesn't the Sakana Times, I think the Sakana Times is always looking for editorial stuff, and this could just be a press release. No, oh, okay. Yeah, each time that we we feature a business. Yeah, I mean, they're always, I mean, um, you know, they came to us back in the summer, They uh, because they have no editorial or very little because of the pandemic, they came to the TYC looking to write a story about the sale training. So, I know they're looking for stuff for filler and, mm -hmm. and that might be a way to get some information and uh, publicize both uh, Caitlin's business as well as uh, uh, let people know about the EDC. So you're saying write a letter or how would I do that? Oh, or I would just contact the editorial staff at the Scon at Times and just say, hey, you know, um, Renee Jones, I'm with the EDC and in, in, in Rhode Island and we, you know, we we just want to, how, how do we, how do we go about posting a notice of, you know, recognition for this business in Tiverton? And, you know, is this something we can offer on a monthly or a weekly basis? Yeah. I, okay. So did you know who, who did it? Do you know who you did when you went to? I, I don't, but I can, I can try and find out. I think uh, Jimmy Rogers um, uh, dealt with it, but let me, let me, uh, let me look back through my emails. Yeah, because if you could check that out, um, I'm trying to remember if they actually had something in the paper on her. Um, I, I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if the Sakana Times did, but you know, it was it was pretty well publicized online, and uh, and I think I did see a couple of notices in the maybe in the Newport or the Providence paper. 
Okay, so if you can just check that out, Mark, that would be great. Yep. Find we'll out what, what they do. And also, if you happen to, you know, ask if, if um, what's her face was already in the paper, because I, I don't remember to tell you the truth. You know, and, I'll, I, you know, it's probably easier. I'll just call them directly. I'll, I'll get through to somebody. Okay, that's wonderful. Because I think that I, I just am trying to think of ways that we can get some more people looking at. We did get um, on the EDC um, um, site, there was somebody um, contacted the EDC and asked for some information. He's, he was interested in starting a business, you know, wanted to know how to go about doing that. And I um, told him that, you know, there's two things. If he wanted to, he could literally just go, you know, make an appointment to go into town hall because they'd be more than happy to help him with any of the particulars. But that also, if he wanted to, I would be more than happy to mail him one of our pamphlets that is, you know, a place that we could start that at least would give him the names of the businesses or the agencies that he might have to contact. And he never got back to me. So I don't know actually what happened. He might have gone into town hall or he might not. But every now and then there will be somebody requesting some information on our website. So um, I do follow up with that when I get it. Um, but I haven't heard anything more about that. So if, if you can at least check with the Sakana Times, because that, you know, because I've also thought about writing letters or something, but I, you know, I don't know, you know, what to, to do. So I'm putting yeah, it up. Let, let me give them a call. I, you know, maybe, um, you know, not as a letter, but maybe just as a kind of an editorial story about what, you know, what the EDC does for Tiveden and, you know, and, and let me, but I'll, I'll give them a call and let me find out what's going on there. Okay. Can't hurt. I mean, I know, you know, this week's paper was a little shy, so I know they're looking for <laughs> looking for stuff. I mean, the I big know. story was the big story was the the cows. I don't know if you saw that one. Yes, the cows. <laughs> a welfare check on the cows who turned out to be fake cows. But fake anyway, cows. <laughs> right, right. That was so. it. All right. So if you can check on that, um, because I I would really like the website to be more dynamic you know get people used to looking at it so if there's any way we can sort of encourage that um i mean i think it's important for people to if we can make it a resource a real resource that people will use that would be great um, and i do think that that you know somehow getting the information of of what we're doing on the website even if it's just that to the council to make us more visible to the council yeah. is uh, also a positive too. All right. So if we if we sort of get an idea of um, what's going on with the Sakana Times, and I mean, I can be thinking in terms of like what else is going on. I mean, for example, if I went to the town council, I think they're having a meeting this week, so I can't, I'm not on, I can't be on the agenda unless I actually just do open meeting thing and get up and say something. But um, what I could do is like say, okay, congratulations to, um, Caitlin, and also that, you know, um, the, there's more funding coming through. So people need to be aware of that. Something like that, just to, just to get it out there. Mark. Oh, you know, and that, that would be really, I'm sure this kind of times would love to publish something like that too. Right. Right. Small yeah. business. Because we know that there were at least last week, last session, we know that there were at least 200 businesses, according to, I got something from Ashley Medeiros, who's now not working with them. And she said that there were, a, she sent me 200 businesses that had gotten money, but no names and no, you know, she didn't send me the name. She sent me what the grants were. And some of them were pretty sizable. Um, you know, they went from anywhere from like $1,300 to, you know, $150,000. So I don't know who those were um, because I didn't have the actual names of the businesses, but um so Ashley Medeiros is not working with them anymore? No, she's not. She's moved on. Um, she, th there's a gentleman named Mark or Michael who um, is now my connection um, with them. And he's, I've been in touch with him and he said, you know, anything, if we have specific questions, just get to him and he will be happy to help us with anything. Um, she had just gotten a better, I mean, she was sharp. She had gotten a better yeah, job. She was, I liked her. I liked her a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, I know That's why well, she's moved on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know Alan at Smith uh, Auto did get um, uh, so, uh, some PPE money. Yeah. I don't know if it was, I, 
I don't know if it was federal or state, but um, yeah, and and like I said, there there is some. It was just in the Providence Journal today, that, um, or yesterday, and I saw it and I went, "Oops!" So I I um, went to RI Commerce and saw what they had said too. Um, so what they were saying was that they're going to revamp the application, but in the meantime, between now and the 19th, when the new application is going to be on the RI Commerce website people can be looking to get their information in, in order, so. Yeah, uh, I think Gina mentioned it on Wednesday, yesterday as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's stuff that um, is coming up. So that's what, the website is something that, if everybody could just sort of plant an idea in their head and think about what we could do to get some more stuff going on that so it could be more, like I said, dynamic and people could know that it's a resource for them, that would be great. Um, Barbara had, number four was Barbara had talked about alternate funding raises ideas for the EDC. And what she had done for the Arts Council was that she had um, come up with a placemat that had, I, I've not seen it, but apparently she brought this placemat out to the businesses and, you know, a typical dining placemat, you know, around the edges you have um, businesses and they paid for this ad. And so she had about 500 of them and sent them out or dropped them off at different restaurants in town. She, apparently the only one that didn't take them was the boathouse. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> she said yeah. something about the boathouse. I said, oh, I'm not surprised. No. Um, <laughs> well, she, had she done it on different linen? demographic. <laughs> yeah, different demographic. <laughs> so uh, I think, you know, we have only $500, that's our budget for this year. So, um, you know. I, I, I think that if, you know, one way is to solicit funds from, you know, the banks maybe, but for a specific project. So if we have a project that might be five or $600 or a thousand, then I think you could, you know, make that sales pitch to the bank and ask for our contribution to cover it. So I think, you know, so if we have say a big printing thing that we want to do or some other thing like that, that you've got something specific to, to, to do and we haven't got the money for it. Mm -hmm. I think that would be probably a good way to manage that. Right. So if we, if we had an idea for a specific project, um, right. is the things that still, the, you know, there may be parts of the budget that we can work out that, yeah, this is, you know, this is the hole in our budget that we, we lost because of the COVID. Right. Um, could you help us fill it in so that we can do the things we had planned? Right. Because I, I can't pitch anything to citizens that would be a conflict oh, of interest, but I can Oh, I understand that. I wasn't even thinking about citizens. I'm thinking really more oh, bank no, I was going to say it's a great idea. I could find out maybe a contact person you know, right. for someone, if we're in that situation and we want to. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, right off the bat, I don't have a specific project. We, we right. at one point had been talking about doing a mailing and actually that's still something that sort of um, plays in the back of my head, but for a different reason, because one of the things that I, I really felt this year was that, and, and during this COVID thing was that, again, you know, I have, I have about, a hundred emails addresses, you know, a bunch from Four Corners because I've been going to their meetings and I have all of theirs. And then I've been picking at, you know, one here, one there. And um, it's one of those things where I wish we had, if we had had like a real functional email list, we could have sent out these things directly to people instead of putting them on the website. You know what I mean? It, mm. so, so I don't know. I still keep thinking that somehow or another, um, some kind of mailing to get to let people know that we exist and come up with some reason for the mailing, either email or you know how is it going or I don't know. Um, that might be some way to that might be something that we could use as a project, but uh, you know that's up to us to decide. I don't know where everybody's at on that. Well, I think you're right about the email thing. It's just something that you have to you know. You have to beat on it with a stick, you know, and just keep well, gathering yeah. them. Well, as you know, it's so funny. Lisa, I'm going to ask you, because you're more tech savvy than me. And, and actually, Mark, you are too. 
I was going to say, Mark's probably more than me. So. Everybody, everybody's more oh, oh, serious trouble then. Everybody's more <laughs> savvy than me. I was like, oh my God. Um, one of the things that, um, that happens was like, so I would go to like a business, right? And they have a website. So I go to the website and there's no email address. What they have is that um, you contact, hit contact, thing. contact thing, but that's not their email, right? No. Well, it might be, but well, it no. What it, what it does is it, it goes to um, it goes to whoever is handling their website, and it it may whoever goes to so rather than giving out uh, an email that they get inundated, you have to reach through, reach them through their contact. So you would fill out your name, you know what you're what you're inquiring about, and they will get the message either through email through their web host or whatever. Um, so you could, you know, so typically there's like a comment section, right? So you have your, you enter your name, maybe your email address, maybe your phone number, and then a comment section. And, and, and that would be the way you'd reach out to them. Um, and, and if they want to give us the email, they will. And if they don't yeah. want to hear from us, they won't. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. So somebody, so for me, if I wanted to send like a, a you know, blast, you know, I, I have email yeah. addresses. For the four corners, but that wouldn't work for that because then I would have to then. No, out. yeah, you have to you know to gather email addresses from the folks that have that system to add to your contact list. Then you're going to have to solicit through that. To go through the it, yeah, okay. To get them, because that's what I've been. I, I that's what a lot of you know, because that's what you a lot of the business will have like a website, and that's what they'll have. Yeah. So, um, and I've done that and I've not gotten anything. So, that, yeah. so, <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> guess what? Yes. <laughs> have we have we talked to the town? I know there's resource changes in town as well, but have we talked to the town about them collecting email addresses when people come into town hall to perform yep. you know, certain activities? Yep. What did they say? They said they would do it. I don't know how reliable they are, but that has been something that, and actually it's all started, it goes back to that whole lean thing, which they did, because when we were pushing that, um, remember we had that lean project that we yep. got down to do for business. Um, so that was part of what I was doing. Um, and every time I went in to push that, I would talk to the people who were getting the things and saying, it would be really helpful if you have email you ask people and they didn't have a space for anything they had no space for emails on the form so when people came in there was no they didn't think to ask so um to be perfectly honest with you since this covid thing hit i have not been in to ask anything but okay. I, but i had been told um that they were going to start asking for emails so i can actually i can i can text um before you know um I can text them and see if they've gotten any more emails because what they were doing was working off the same business list that I had. There was about a business list that had about 600 names on it. And mm -hmm. so, um, and then, so their whole thing was that they were going to start anytime anybody new came in, they were going to ask for the email, but they also had told me that they were going to start, you know, as things, if they had a chance requesting emails. So, cause I even had spoken to Dave Robert at one point and said, is there some way like when the tax bills go out to business, yep. you could put something I was thinking. and say, can, and, and it was just like, you know, you have to, I think the timing of it was wrong. Cause I was thinking about it around tax time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have to do it before tax time. So, I mean, you know what I can, I can touch base with um, town hall. And, and Dave Robert. And see if we can, I mean, um, because that would be, if, if we could put something in the mailing that goes out to business, maybe, you know, that's just another way of letting people know we're there. If it's just a little blurb that says, you know, the Tiverton Economic Development Commission you know, is, is trying to, you know, put together a database of the businesses in town and you're, we need your email. I don't know, something like that. I can check with Dave Robert about that. That would be something I can do. Okay. Let me see what else. 
what is this? So this is the draft minutes. I'm sorry, I've dropped my pro my uh, thing. Oh, you look like Sheldon Whitehouse. Did you guys see him on TV? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sitting in this chair. This is like the most bizarre thing because you know you try to figure out where can you sit that you're um you know you're not showing your life or it's not dirty or <laughs> the laundry, <laughs> or the laundry's not piled in the back, you know, something like that. Um so okay, so I will um in terms of alternative fundraising ideas, before we get to that point, I guess we're looking to see if we can get some email addresses and also come up with an idea for, so put that in the back of your head, I guess. If, if there's something that you think we need to do, like we did the, the garden, what else could we do that would get some attention and get some good, in, you know, good feedback? I mean, people have stopped when when martin was there one time cleaning the weeds people a guy stopped and said you're doing a great job i really like this people noticed it you know what i mean so at least that one person did i mean i don't i can't say anybody else did but uh i think it's i when i drive by i mean i know i'm looking for it but i think it's different it looks different you see it yeah. uh, and i yeah. think, i think that that's the kind of thing we need to be thinking about one of the um, town councilors who is no longer going to be on the town council, Tricia Hilton, had said that, you know, and this gets back to the whole North Tiverton thing. She was saying, you know, maybe what you need to do is just start with, you know, like same way we started with the garden, you know, um, is there a project to dress up the streetscape of North Tiverton, you know, put lampposts, I'm just coming off the top of my head, you know, lampposts or, um, uh, small business window boxes or something that would make it look um, dressed up a bit more and, and that be something sponsored by the EDC. That's the kind of stuff, you know, she was talking about um, just to get a, a start somewhere. Um, so I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there if people can put it in the back of their brains and think of what we could do to start. Actually, maybe, a, maybe, maybe I'll take another trip down there <laughs> and just drive through North Tiverton and find a place where, you know, there's some potential walk, walkable businesses that you could put a planter. I mean, you don't want small window boxes because guess what? They're going to end up in the middle of the street or, <laughs> or whatever in somebody else's yard. But, you know, heavy duty concrete containers, but they can be pretty spectacular, but you'd have to get a buy-in for people to take care of them. That's all. Right. So I, but you know, just, to, that's, that's the idea. Like if you could just think of a couple of, you know, places where there would be space, that would be something a little, you know, we could put maybe two and then somebody else would say, gee, I really like those. Could you put one in front of my business? Yes. Uh, that's the kind of thing. I, I think, you know, we need to, I'm just feeling like we need to do something to let people know we exist still, so. The, um, you know, my observation in that particular little neighborhood mm -hmm. is that the sidewalk area is so tiny mm. on both sides that there's no space for things like that. But I have, you have to look at maybe an inter another intersection, maybe there's a little setback where you could do something that, uh, and then you just approach the business and see if they'd be interested in, you know, we, if we got all the stuff and planted it, would they water it? <laughs> water it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I I just foresee that for the next year, uh, I don't know what financial grants are going to be coming out, what mm. things are going to be coming out. It's going to be a really tough time for everybody to sort of get back on, on board with everything. But if there's something that we could do to just sort of I, uh, I don't know if I ever showed you, I might have, but uh, I'm going to look and see if I can find the pictures I took of Kennebunk, Maine. And the, oh, yeah. the, the display of horticulture in Kennebunk, Maine is off the charts. I mean, it's like crazy. I was there in August and it was amazing. I've never yes. seen such a pretty town. It's just yeah. really spectacular. And you, you know that it's, it puts everybody in the, in a mood to spend money because it's just, it's great. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were just driving home from another you know, thing and I had to stop and take some pictures because it was, it shows what horticulture can do for, you know, retail, I think. Yeah, it's just, it, it's just something that we've got to, uh, again, um, 
you know, it, it's nice when you can get a bazillion, you know, a nice grant to do redo Grinnell's beach. That's perfect. Mm. I don't know. Um, yeah. If there's a big enough, you know, a project that big down there, I, but you don't have to get one as big as Grinnell's because Grinnell's is huge. Right. You have to get something that's maybe 10% of that. Right. And, and I, go ahead. And just to improve things. It still drives me crazy about the weeds on the side of the road, but I'm not sure there's anything we can do about that. <laughs> <laughs> Except physically going out there and weed whacking them all. But Please don't uh, come to my garden, Martin, because right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's just as bad. So I had other things going on. My, bar, my garden's going to bed this weekend. I, had, I just pulled out the last bunch of tomatoes. I'm so done with tomatoes right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I tell you, I, I can never get enough of them. <laughs> I love oh, them. Man. I've got tomatoes in my, yeah. in my freezer for like months now. I can live on Good. them. Good. Um, anyway, so if, if you could take a look at just sort of, I think if we all, again, just put it in your head. As to, you know, like, is there a part of town? Well, you know, like when you go down to Tiverton Four Corners, there's a sense of, it's a distinct area. So I'm just trying to think, is, is there something we can do to sort of start encouraging that sense of North Tiverton, start encouraging that sense, you know, just to sort of, it serves a double purpose. It's us helping out, but it's also reinvigorating in a very small way. Uh, you know, yeah, the the the, pl the people that that are running businesses there and who live there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so I'll I'll just let you take a look at it with your your great eye, <laughs> because you have such a good eye for that stuff. Um, the the number five was the crossing DPW. Barbara had raised that as an issue, and she said it's okay because apparently what she saw was that the 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 merchants themselves were putting cones in the crosswalk. So yeah, wait, apparently there isn't a, there is a, is there a actual crosswalk? No, I thought she said there wasn't, but no, there's not, but they were putting cones there to sort of slow down the traffic. Traffic. Yeah. So she kind of was thinking um, what she had said was, I don't want to push something on, on the vendors that they don't want. Um, right. Well, I, that's why really I didn't call the state and I really was remiss in that kind of contacting you guys, but is that I didn't want to call the state before we actually contact, you know, talk to the association. And it might be worth it to put that on an agenda item. And if they would like us to pursue it, then we can go to DOT and maybe in five or six years, we can get a crosswalk. <laughs> <laughs> um, that sort of, that brings us to number four six because maybe I can do that. Um, I did go to the last uh, Four Corners Business Association meeting. And um, that's really, I have to say, they are really an impressive group. Um, they have um, banded together. They do advertising together. They do pamphlets together. They um, advertise. I heard them advertised on NPR. I've heard them yeah. advertise. Yeah, they're everywhere and they've been working really, really hard to get the word out that they're still open. They've been, um, but when you go to a meeting, it's just like they're all very much um, working together. I really get that sense that they're, they're exact. If I could take that model and put it into different areas of town or different yeah. um, business associations, it would be great because that's the other thing, you know, we keep talking about North Tiverton and, and part of me has been saying, maybe we should be talking about a, a auto body association or, yeah, a, yeah. or a, you know, I don't know, a, a cleaning association versus, you know, distinct areas of town, but they do a really good job and they're planning, um, the things that they brought up at the last meeting is they're planning a, a holiday bright night for December 4th they are going to be doing a, a retree, which I think is something they've done before. I was not familiar with it, but they recycle materials and turn them into Christmas trees that they then put into in front of their businesses. So um, that should be happening, I think around December 4th. I'll know a little bit more about it because somebody was supposed to be coming up with the um, the press release and I was supposed to be on the list to get one. So I should follow up on that because I haven't heard. And she said it would be by the 12th and here we are on the 15th. Um, but they were doing that. And then they were also talking about small business 
shopping on 1128, which is, you know, like small business Friday, I guess that's the mm. um, thing. So I'm wondering if that's also something we can put on our website, just small business. Yeah. And I, and I can, when I get more information about that bright night, I will um, put that on our website as well. And um, we'll, we'll meet, we'll be meeting before then. So I can give you the actual information as soon as I get it at the next meeting, probably they'll have it. So the difference between the bright night and the retree again, um, bright night is the whole celebration and retreat, okay. I think is going to be part of that. Um, okay. So they're going to have the shops open late um, and they're coming up with plans as we speak because it, it was just being talked about at the last meeting. Um, but I think, you know, it's going to be things like maybe some of the shops will have cookies or something. I mean, part of the problem is that they're dealing with this COVID thing as well. So they were trying yeah. to figure out what would be a safe way of doing everything. Um, but those were the two dates that came up that the 1128 is going to be small business and um, December 4th, as of the last time I heard was the bright night event. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of like what Bristol does something like, cause they do the holiday event every year probably. where their stores are open and all decorated. And okay. yes, yes. Probably, right. probably like that. Yes, exactly. Um, so those will be coming up and we'll have more information as it gets a little closer. Okay, the greater connect, the name of the guy that I'm supposed to be talking about is here on the thing, Rich Overmeyer. He's the one that took over Ashley Medeiros' position. So um, I can reach out to him if we need help with anything or if we have any questions. Um, Ashley was really good at, you know, if I had a question, she, she'd find an answer. I don't, within a day you know, I'd, I'd know what it was. That's how I got the list from all the businesses that had gotten loans. She was able to find that like instantly. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, you know, he's just a resource and it's from Connect Greater Newport. And there's, that's that whole, you know, Newport Chamber of Commerce, Discover Newport, that's all those different organizations together. So um, they're all struggling with this, this COVID thing as well and trying to figure out what to do. But that's our new connection. And then they already talked about Shop Small. Barbara had gone to, the number nine is Barbara had gone to um, several businesses to the print shop because she was interested in finding out the cost of not business cards, but some kind of stationery from the EDC. And she told me that it would be about $74 to get a hundred uh, fold over cards that could be slipped in an envelope to use as stationary if we wanted to send something to a business or congratulations, or a note or something like that. Um, I haven't seen them, so I don't know what the design is. Um, I'm sorry she's not on because maybe she could have, they, she could have showed us what it was gonna look like or, so she has followed up on it, but that's what it is. Um, I'm, I, We've got $500. If that's something people want to do, we could look into the design further, but it's about $100 for about, or $74 for about 100 pieces of. Well, it would be nice to have something that you that has us on it that you're going to send out. And you probably wouldn't go through hundreds in a year. You'd probably go through 10 or 15 at the most, but right. reasonable so investment. So I think it's it would be like it would have the seal, the Tiverton seal on it with the Economic Development Commission, with our, you know, the, the town hall is our address. Um, probably. The website. What's that, huh? The website. <laughs> yeah, the website and the email. Yes, exactly. Anything we send out has to have the website and the email. Yes. So, um, you know, I, I mean, it's, we could do that. Um, I Seems like I, a small cost for a, a fairly decent impact. So, if if we want, we can we can go ahead with that and see if we can come up with a design for that. I would, I would do that. Yeah. Okay. So let's come up with a design and go ahead. Okay. Um, and it, literally we're at, you know, for, for the next meeting that we're supposed to have is 11, 12. So 
by 11, 12, we know we should maybe have a design and some more information about bright night. Um, you know, you're gonna be looking for, um, we can come up with some ideas of alternative fundraising. I'll have gone to another Four Corners meeting. Does anybody have things that they wanna, you know, talk about in terms of where we should be going? I'm just feeling like we, with all this COVID stuff, I, I'm just not sh sure where to jump. I don't know about anybody else. Well, I think one of the things we had talked about doing was trying to, um, and it might be me that's the gap, but trying to partner a little more closely with the planning um, committee. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. Holy crap. I can't believe I didn't say that. Yes. In fact, lo and behold. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, this was she on paid me to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth, because guess what? Um, I have been in touch with Jennifer Ceciliano. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, Jennifer Siciliano is our new planning board, uh, is our new planner, town planner. Okay. Um, and I have been in touch with her um, recently um, because of, I, I listened to the workshop that they had, they had a, a joint workshop with the Tiverton Town Council last Thursday. And they had it because they wanted to talk about um, solar, the solar ordinance, and they wanted to talk about um, development. Because there's, and if anybody's been paying attention, we have now had three articles, one in the Providence Journal, one in the Newport Daily News, and one just just today in the Sakana Times about oh, yeah, the the, yes the fact that Tiverton is going to be the only city in Newport County that they're expecting a, an increase in population, and that's because Tiverton has not been built out like Newport, Bristol, Portsmouth, Middletown, Portsmouth. Portsmouth, right? So um, it was very interesting because those articles came out because of the workshop, but now. Um, I did write her a letter personally, not from the EDC, my own self, saying that I have had concerns for a long time about this. Um, and I asked her if she would be interested in doing her presentation for us. Okay. So, so next, if we wanted to, um, I could ask her if she could come to the um, November 12th meeting and do her slide presentation and talk to us about development in the town and what she sees as concerns. Okay. One of the reasons that I asked is I did see a posting on the Tiverton Happenings Facebook page. You know, it's mostly things about coyotes and yeah. helicopters and yeah, and stores that don't exist anymore. But there was something, and I think Jay Edwards responded to it, where someone mentioned that Tiverton is going to start um, explosively developing over the next few years and then I think there was some people were saying, well, you know what? We don't want big apartment buildings. You know, we're okay with planned development, but we don't want a lot of development. And then there was, you know, people were all over the place with their responses. And some people were saying, I think we should have one acre requirements for new homes to, so that we're not, getting, you know, and uh, so the fact that there was that much interest made me remember that we were going to try and partner better with the planning board so we would know what's on the, docket and what we're looking at. So I think this is great if she can come do that. So why don't I, why don't I ask her because it'll give us a, it was very interesting and and she came up with a the presentation was interesting in that um, first of all she highlighted our our favorite area that whole um Sousa Road area yeah. um, for, um because there is already in the pipeline, there was approved a 250 unit development um, that's sort of abuts Fish Road and- uh, Because it's on the north side of Sousa, right? North side of Sousa, right. Hmm. Um, interestingly enough, in the time that we've been talking, you know, in the time that I talked to her the first time and this time, DEM had refused permits for them. Because I thought it was shut down, yeah, okay. But it had been shut down as far as DEM. That doesn't mean it's been shut down entirely. DEM, okay. DEM was saying that they had um, not accounted for 
the impact of uh, the wetlands, what their building would have on the wetlands and the impact on the bay. And so they shut them down. Um, however, it didn't, it didn't mean that it's something's not gonna happen. But also in that area, somebody had approached the planning board for a 180 unit development. Um, and then there was a 52, so she has all this information. So I'm, I'm not gonna, but this is all the stuff. That, but one of the things that was interesting that she said was that, you know, what happens at the planning board is because we don't have a professional planner, these guys come in and present these plans and we don't have anybody that can give an alternative, right? right. But she was able to say, you know, there's such things as, as long as you can document and, and bind it to a specific reason, you can do things like limit permits, building permits, you can limit the number of building permits given in a year, you can, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so it was really interesting what she was talking about. So why don't I do that? See if she can come for the next meeting. Um, and, and do her slide presentation. It would be a Zoom meeting, so we can do it by Zoom. That's what she did before. Okay. And, and we can ask her questions yeah. about that. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, down south, there's no water. I mean, they're all, they're right. all, all the wells are, you know, in Winnesota. Yeah. Water wars. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, um, I, I have a did a little, some down near Fogland and, um, uh, Connie Lima said, yeah, the people down, you know, behind, you know, west of her, they're trucking water in just so they have water to take a shower. Potable water. They don't have potable yeah. water down there. Yeah. So, and the other thing that's always been interesting to me, and I don't know if Jennifer can look into this, but that whole North Tiverton water group. Yeah. Right? Every time a big business, you know, a big thing comes in, they always say, oh, we have plenty of water, but I don't know what's going on up there. It's, a, it's an interesting yeah. se semi-autonomous, you know, right. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing up there, but okay. So I will ask her for that. And so that will be top on our agenda for November 12th. Thank you so much for reminding me about that, Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth. But it would have gone <laughs> right over my head and it was the first thing on the note and she's really she's very good um i'm really happy she's around so that'll be our first step i'd usually do at least get the agenda for um the planning board to look at it to see what's coming up um i think you can do that automatically if you go to the secretary of state i don't even know how i did it because I've been doing, it did it so long ago, but you can put yourself on a list so that when the planning board's agenda comes up, you get notified. Oh, from, okay. From the Secretary of State. And I think if you go to the Secretary of State website, you can go and figure out like frequent, they have all kinds of stuff. And then that way you can see what's coming up. Cause sometimes it's, you know, nothing and other, but you get notified anyway. So that's one thing we could do for sure. All right. Anyway. Um, anybody else? Wow. Just, um, I'll, I'll just, just a story. When I was cleaning up the garden in North Tiverton, mm -hmm. we planted those grasses, that's yeah. little blue stem. Yeah. Well, I suspect that they're seeding excessively. <laughs> the, the seedlings are coming up all over the place in the gutter right there around the garden. <laughs> so it's not like it's invasive, but because it is a native grass, but, uh, but it's definitely viable. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Should, should I go grab them? If I'm passing, do you want me to pull them out? Well, you know, uh, I don't think it's really an issue because I think I eliminated all the ones around there, but, uh, okay. you know, except for the ones we planted. <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, there's one other thing about invasive grasses. I was in, going down East Main Road in Middletown, and there's an open lot there just past Kempinar's place. Yeah. And there are um, those miscanthus grasses, the great big, tall, um, plumed grasses. Yes, yes. And they are all over that field. Oh. Ooh, yeah. So they're pretty hardy, huh? They're, they're and yeah, I, the ones I had in my yard, I got rid of them entirely. And five years later, they're still coming up. Uh, that's like <laughs> my orange blue. daylilies. Those and my, <laughs> my um, yucca plants and my orange daylilies. I can't kill them. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know what to do. They just come up 
and if they don't come up where you thought they were, they come up somewhere else. So oh, yeah. I don't know what to do about those. Um, uh, anything else that we need to, to bring up? Because um, I'm good, really. Yeah. So everybody a few things to do. Yeah, a few things to do. And um, oh, I know that I do know the other thing that I wrote down that Groundswell is going for their liquor license this coming um, town council meeting. That's the, the ground, that's the uh, yep. restaurant Provender. Provender was. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know um, how soon. See, that's, I guess, when I look at that, if we did have some nice um, stationery or something, that's something we could do, like just send out a letter to Groundswell and say, congratulations, we're looking forward to. Um, there. Have it, have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, coming there and, and you opening and blah, blah, blah. So um, I'll see if I can either talk to Paul or I don't know who would design that. He designs it, so. Yeah, you could ask it to if, if you model it after the after the town stationary, right? Just change it to EDC, you know, right? EDC with the you know the different website, then it's you're just maintaining consistency, right? Right, and he won't have to charge us for a real because he will charge for design. So yeah, you're just you're just basically taking an existing one and modifying it with a little bit of information. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I and I don't particularly think we need to put our names on it because then if we don't use it, somebody else can use it. Yeah, it, yeah, it should be as generic as possible. Yeah. Just with okay. the website being more prominent, maybe. Yeah, website and email address makes sense to me. Okay. All right. Is All right. Everybody... Marching orders. All right. Is yeah. everybody gonna vote? <laughs> yes. <they> tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna do my mail ballot tomorrow. Vote early and vote often, as we say here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and According if any, to Mr. T. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I, I have, I have my cheat sheet. If anybody's interested, I have people that have asked me for a cheat sheet who I'm voting for. But I have a, uh, I have a ballot box in front of the house. So just redirect all your TTAs to me and <laughs> those ballots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, we'll see how it goes, but all just right. Kidding. This is being recorded. I was just kidding. Yes. Was just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, Good job. <laughs> so, listen, thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm really glad right. you're all here. And I will um, I will um, let you know as soon as I know if um, Jennifer Siciliano is going to make that meeting. So you can. Okay, great. Her. Okay. I think that's a good meeting. Yeah, looking forward to that. All yep. right. You all guys right. have a great night.